Hi, everyone, and welcome to This Marketing Show, Season 2, Episode 20, actually. And our guest this week is Jeremy Dunton, who is a media personality. He's a writer. He's had experience in sales and marketing. He's also my former co-host on the morning show, A Channel Morning, which ran for nearly 10 years. And actually, Jeremy, I would say some of my fondest career memories ever were with you next to me. So it's an honor to have you on the show today. And thank you so much for your time. Oh, no question, Cheryl. So nice to be here. So nice to be here, Cheryl. So nice to be here, Rick. And Cheryl, I I, if you learned half of what I learned from you, I learned so much in my career, Rick, from Cheryl, just watching how she handled things. It was so wonderful to me being so new to the business to have someone like Cheryl there to help me along. Well, the feeling is definitely mutual. Well, let me break up this love affair here. I I learned (laughs) one thing today. It looks like Cheryl likes bald co-hosts, but we won't get into that. (laughs) Hey, remember I gave you that tip, Rick, where I said you want to you want to fire it before it quits. Jeremy was the guy that actually was the one that taught me that. So there you go. Um, Jeremy, you've had experience, as I said, in a lot of different areas uh, in the media, in radio, television, now in writing, which we'll talk about another day. But when you look back and think about the skills and the talents that were required for each of your roles, which were very different, what do you think was the constant skill for you that allowed you to be so successful in everything that you've done? Uh, That's a great question. I would say uh, ability to communicate, as I hum and ha and ah there, ability to communicate, not only being able to uh, do a good job of telling people what I want them to hear or what I want to get across, but also just as equally important, being able to listen to what they have to say. And that's a great example of my time on air with Cheryl. Rick was about uh, having a plan for every question all along the road and being ready to throw that, that plan out the window because question two could lead you to something far more interesting than what you thought and what you had planned. So being able to listen and being able to express myself uh, with a question was essential in every job I've had. So, so uh, folks, uh, Jeremy, I think is a perfect person for you to listen to because he's been on TV like Cheryl. He's been involved in the public forum in many ways and how to communicate and now is in a sales capacity, which many of our viewers are Jeremy. So a lot of reps right now, we're pushing them to get on video, get active on social and companies to communicate their story slash value proposition. So as you prepared for a show or whatever it is you've done, is there a methodology that you think needs to be considered to come up with a great story? It's a great question, Rick, to come up with a great story. Uh, you can never know too much about your customer, your client, your potential client. Um, and use that ability or, or ha- take that information and show it off as often as you can. Uh, one of the phrases I often use with potential customer, or potential client is something like, uh, from what I understand of your business or something like, uh, from what my research has shown me about your industry so that I can show them that I understand or have done my best to try to understand the problems that they must be facing in their industry. If you find an industry that's not Uh, facing any problems right now, then you're a better man than I. But I would look for all those things and and find those ways to show them that I understand. My methodology would be learn as much as humanly possible about them and the issues that they're facing. That is very good advice. Um, Jeremy, one of the things that we work on a lot with our clients is trying to figure out the story behind their business, which from a marketing perspective, for me, is very critical in being able to develop these materials. So what makes you different? Because oftentimes the product service is a commodity. I think for a lot of them, it's really hard to kind of take that step outside of their role and actually identify the story that's kind of organically already there. And I think that's what you do so great. And, and you always did when we were, you know, telling the stories of, of the on-air guests that we had on the morning show every day. So what are some tips that you've learned throughout your career that could possibly help some of these business leaders and owners step outside that box and be able to identify what their origin story really is? Well, I think the first step would be what you just said there, identify. And that's a, a very a surprisingly difficult thing for a lot of companies to be able to do is take a honest, genuine, hard look at who they are and what they do better than everybody else. Um, and you'd be, you would, I, oh, maybe you wouldn't be surprised. You probably run into the same percentage of people that I run into that don't understand uh, what they do or don't have a handle on what they do that's different than everybody else. Um, so what I would do is a have that often very difficult and often long conversation about who we are and what we represent. And then I would make sure that that, um, that message is as simple 
as humanly possible. If you can boil it down more, you haven't boiled it down enough. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example from the world of uh, politics. I spent a brief period of time helping some, some uh, people try to get elected us two, one, one, but that's not the important part. The important <laughs> part is uh, one time the campaign manager was working on the piece of literature that your, the politician leaves behind, gets stuck in your mailbox or in your door jam or whatever. And we were working on that and he kept trying to simplify with the team. We need it simpler, we need it simpler, we need it simpler. And they weren't really getting it. So to show them, he said, you know, we want this thing. We want this thing to be understood in the time it takes to go from the mailbox to your recycle bin. That's it. He, is a, that is a, and that is a guy who, that was the campaign we won, but that's a guy who really understood how uh, essential it was to make that easily digested message in the time it took you to transfer the mail from your right hand and say, this is junk mail to your left hand and throw it in the recycle bin. He needed to get his message across. And um, the fact that he won, is probably a good example that he knew what he was talking about. So, you, you know, what's great, Jeremy, about your background is I, I, I think your skill set is so transferable into sales and the role you're in right now. You, you talked about a couple of things just before uh, we went on air here. And I'm wondering if you could share those with the, uh, the viewer. One was specifically about answering the why you're discussing what you are. And secondly, around body language, which I think is so critical, especially in a virtual or in a physical uh, situation. Okay, so uh, the why, uh, what I was saying to Rick was that I really love uh, telling people why I am asking the question I'm about to ask. And it does a couple of different things. One, it, it's going to illustrate to them um, that I'm trying to help. I'm trying to present them with a solution. So why I'm asking you this question is so that I can get the information I need to present you with a solution. And the other thing I'm about doing about asking is that they may also, when I'm asking, telling them why, they may give me information that I didn't specifically ask for. Uh, so the example I had was uh, of, of that is a customer I was asking about the process of the piece of paper. And I, I wasn't getting what I did. So I said, this is the piece of paper. It comes into your office. What happens to it? And I want to follow, I want to know your processes. And when she did, we realized that half the day, her staff was walking back and forth to different printers on other ends of the building. Well, the answer there is really quite simple. And for a guy who sells printers, quite positive because we just added another printer to save them all that walking. Um, it may sound like a silly thing, but uh, for me, it was a customer that uh, I think we've won for life and a customer that 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 uh, we were able to sell more to, but we're also able to streamline and make things more efficient there. Um, sorry, so Rick, the second half of that question? I think of the first part though, what you made mention of before was it's really important to explain why you're asking what you're mm -hmm. asking before you actually ask the question. Yeah, and that idea that I'm I'm want to find more about what it is, why I'm asking that question. Here's why I'm going to ask you if you understand what a large capacity tray is or uh, what OCR is or why you're still using facts. And once I have those answers, I can take you in different avenues. So it shows them that I'm paying attention and it also shows them that I'm uh, you know, I'm I'm informed enough to be on their side and help them. Yeah, because that, that, that's a uh, strategy I've, I've heard uh, great speakers from the military share about you need to share the why you want people to do something before you actually ask them the task. The second thing that you were sharing I thought was bang on was about reading body language. And you talked about, hey, you've got to look on your face or whatever. And I, I think not enough salespeople use the value of someone's physical presence or facial expression as a, as a form of communication to pick up on cues and then stop and ask and come back. Maybe you could speak to that quickly. Yeah. So the example I had for Rick was a book by Alan Alda, the guy who used to be on MASH. And he said, uh, if I knew what you were saying, would I have this look on my face? Name of the book. <laughs> and, and too often we'll ignore those cues that, that you just mentioned there, Rick. Too often we'll ignore those cues of what people are giving us. And I don't think there's anything wrong with going back and saying, the look on your face tells me you didn't understand what OCR is, or um, the look on your face tells me that these numbers are just going over your head. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with taking those cues, stopping the train. Sometimes, you know, as salespeople, we get on the sales train and we're looking forward to that close. We're looking forward to sliding that piece of paper across the deck and get, desk and get the signature. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with stopping that train and saying, here's what I'm reading right now. Am I right? Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. I was waiting for Rick to say something about body language, but I guess I'll just let that go. I thought for sure you had a line for me on that I one. Was, I was <laughs> going to say something because it looks yeah. like you're ready to go back to your next question. Yes. 
I have no problem. People know exactly what I'm thinking by looking at my facial expressions 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's dangerous. <laughs> yep. Me That's too. either a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. Um, yep. So my last question as we wrap up, Jeremy, one of the things that that you and I were, I would say, trained on as being on camera talent was being able to continuously hook that audience member into sticking around for more. So as an example, we were trained on how to tease a segment coming up before a commercial break. So we might normally say, or the average person might say, hey, coming up, we're going to do some, you know, Italian cooking with the chef. And, and instead, we were trained to say, okay, why do people care about the Italian Italian cooking with the chef. And instead, can we tweak that to say, we're going to save you 20 minutes on prepping for tonight's dinner. So it's, it's being able to like really target that benefit to the viewer. And I would say that that could, could be applied to everything that you create from a marketing perspective. Um, I just want to get your comments on that, but also the three things that we also kind of talked about a lot when creating content is engage, inform, entertain. And if you can keep those three things in the back of your head, no matter what it is that you're creating, you're probably going to be successful. Would you agree with that? Completely. Uh, completely. Those three things are fantastic. And I look at uh, doing a correct tease from our time together to thinking about it from your customer's point of view. Um, it, it is essentially the same thing. How is this product, service, whatever I'm selling going to be of benefit to you is the exact same as uh, how is the upcoming segment uh, in the show going to be of benefit for you. And I know we're running out of time, but I'll give you the example of the world of real estate here in Northern Ontario. I can't speak for the rest of the province, but it's absolutely exploded as far as the market goes everywhere. And I have, I have yet to see a, I've seen an explosion, I think, in real estate advertising uh, here in the North, but I'm yet to see anybody who's addressing the fact that the market is so hot. All the ads I'm seeing are about uh, names you can trust, um, we're on your side, uh, all the experience you need, that kind of stuff that was pre-pandemic useful. But I'm yet to see anybody who says the market is hot right now and you want me to help you get the most out of it right now. Yeah. I, I, I do not see them marketing from an, I do not see them seeing that from an audience's point of view. I do not see them seeing it from their customer's point of view right now. And they're missing out big time, I think. Yeah, they're just resting on their laurels, right? Like they're just, you know, and I think real estate agents in, in this market to some extent are also a commodity because you know, the lifestyle and the homes will really sell themselves. So again, what's the benefit? The realtor needs to figure that out for sure. That's Agreed. What Agreed. What is the benefit of the audience? I want to see a, a billboard that says um, uh, you, the market is hot and I can help you get the most out of this mm -hmm. or, or the market is hot uh, and I can help you not get fleeced. Yeah. I want to see that as a customer. I want to see yeah. that point of view, not uh, I have a name you can trust. Cheryl, I, I know you've already given the signal you want to wrap up, and Jeremy's got so many great ideas. I'd love to have him back because he's such a hybrid in terms of communicator guy at a high level and also understands sales and marketing. Jeremy, when I got into the speaking business and we were actually charging a fee for the ideas I was going to share, a guy said to me very early in my career, he said, Rick, when you're speaking to an audience, imagine they've got this on their forehead with them. What's in it for me? And everything you do has to tie right into answering that question. So I thought your points just for what it's worth at the beginning about uh, personalizing the message, letting someone know you understand their world, and then explaining the why before you ask maybe for information, I think is just so relevant and picking up on body language. Those are just great tips, I think, that uh, you shared. So thanks sir, very much for uh, sharing your expertise to a sales guy that appreciates what you do, by the way. I Thank you so much. Always delightful to uh, see Cheryl and, and pleasure, uh, Rick, to meet you. And it's great to be here. And and uh, I love being able to talk about communication in sales. Right, or thank otherwise. you. Thank you. We'll have you back for sure. Thank you so much. It was great to see you. Um, wish that you live closer, but we'll, we'll catch up soon in person. Uh, <laughs> thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next week on This Marketing Show.